Hello there, it's me RJB for RJB TV, and today we have a little bit of a different video format. I've got a small list of matches prepared. They were all played on the exact same day. I'm just gonna put them into the list in the box that we have right there. The match tracker box. And we already see two pretty big names there, Brain and Mom. They're gonna be playing our first match today. Then we have a second match between Doey July or Doey versus Rabbit. And that's gonna be a Protoss versus Protoss match. After that, we have up for the menu uh, Gensei or Minchul against Zhang. I'm not sure who Zhang is, but I heard he is pretty, pretty darn good. And Zhang is going to be playing the Terran, and Mitchell is playing the Protoss. So now we have three matches for today, but there's more. We also have Brain against Zhang. And that match will be Brain on the Zerg and Zhang on the Protoss. This is like a lot of different, different, different players again going against each other. And I really hope that this does deliver us some high quality matches. So to recap, once again, we've got Brain against Mong, Doey against Rabbit, Minjul against Zhang, or Jung, it's pronounced differently in Korean, and Brain against Jung again. So without any further ado, let's dive into the first game between Mong and Rabbit. I mean Mong and Brain. Sorry for that one. Mong and Brain. We've got Brain here on the pink Zerg, and right above him we have Mong on the green Protoss. Now we all know that Brain has a really, really, really good Zerg, but we also know that Mong has a pretty damn strong Protoss. Both players are Really, really good players. Mong was in the ASL round of 16, and Brain was in the ASL round of 16 in the season number 9 of the Afrika Star League. So both players have proven their worth, and Mong was even at some point to be considered the second best Terran in pro play, or the third best, behind only Flash and Last. And he was like considered to be number 3. So he is a very, very high level player. And he's also proven, so far, to also be a really, really good fastest map player. As Koreans more or less consider him to be the very best Terran. But of course, now he's playing the Protoss, so it's maybe a different story. Maybe his Protoss is not as, as formidable as his Terran is. Starts off with three gateways. A little bit different than usual, but He's gonna be putting some real, real, real pressure on Brain here, who starts off with the usual choke bolt order for Zerk here. He's got, you know, everything is going as planned. He's got the second over finished up. He's not making his 10th drone. But now he is, though. Now he is. 10th drone is finished. So yeah, he's just gonna save up some larva and wait. Oh no, oh no. This is looking really bad here. He starts off with a hatchery number 3 before he gets any drones to his front because he is simply expecting Mong to not rush but Mong has a Zealot on the way. And he's got the probes across the map as well, right there, it's a probe. So the Zealot arrives here, he's gonna take down that sun- no, he's gonna go straight for the drones. He's gonna ignore the sunken in the front there, he's gonna go for the drone number 2 actually, he's gonna try to get a second creep up in the front. Sunken is morphing, he's still gonna dance back and forth with the drone. Great Michael there from Brain, keeping the drone safe from harm. And now the Zealot is there in the back, and these Zerglings are gonna try to counterattack. Two Zerglings are in the back spawning, he's got two more on the way, he's gonna try to protect the drones and attack at the same time, but the one Zergling went down, two the Zealots are arriving on the scene. He's just forced to make a lot of Zerglings here. This is not looking pretty, those Zealots here can just walk through. He's gonna try to go for the counterattack to get the damage on the throws, but there's Zealots in the base there as well. Protect the probe from the Zerglings, and he's losing some drones in the back, mostly losing Zerglings though. He's got two Zealots to deal with. 
and he doesn't have a lot of circling stats in his own base, he miscalculated. Usually, Brain has some great calculations, but this time around, it's really, really all going wrong. It's really going wrong. Those two Zelda's there in the back, really disrupting his economy, and he's been forced to make so many circlings. He's getting slowed down so much, he has to go for something like an all-in here or fight a really, really steep uphill battle. He does have that one extra hatchery there though, but his income got disrupted for so long, and he still only has two Sunkas in the front, which he should be which should be enough, given he's got like 12 Zerkings here running about. Well, 13 in total. Mong is balling up his Zealous there, back at home. We've got 22 probes against 13 drones. But the drone count can go up pretty quick when those overlords finish. He's making three of them at the same time, which I think is a little bit of an overkill, but you know, he's gonna need that overlord supply space nonetheless, but that could have been four more drones, then one overlord, and then four more drones. Well, something along those lines. But it looks like Mong is going for zealot speed. He's not going for advanced tech like Robos or something. Oh, he is. Excuse me. I'm completely wrong. He's going for a robotic facility. I shouldn't have called it prematurely. He's going for zealot speed and weapon attack here, I think. Weapon attack there, of course, means he's going to use the zealots a lot. The zealot speed would really, really complement those zealots really, really well. But he goes in there with the zealots. The zealots got through. I missed this one. But he gets on top of the drones once again, starts disrupting the economy once again, gets two or three drone kills there in total as well. That's really, really painful there, and he might even get one more. So that there, he gets stuck. He's also taking out the circus in the front. Oh, brain, oh, brain. I've never seen you miscalculate this hard, this often, in such a short period of time. But Monk is really getting the better of you with such a simple strategy here. Brain is trying to play it as efficiently as he can, trying to cut as many corners as he can. But Mong is not really letting him. He does have the Hydless Den finished here though in the back. So he has to, he basically is going for a very fast Hydless switch and hopefully take advantage of the fact that Mong has used a lot of his zealots so far. Zerking so there at the base getting information. We've got a robotic support bay there on the way in the back. Zelda speed is almost finished, and level one attack is also almost finished. Support bay there finishes. So we're getting queue up the reaver and start to formulate a drop. But do note, Mong has only a single nexus, and that might backfire sometime down the road if he finds himself unable to keep dealing damage to Brain. But Brain is only on 18 drones, and we are on 30 probes for Mong. Mong's gonna fly some zealots over the hill and attack at the front at the same time to kill and prune down some of the zerkings there in the front. The zealots arriving near the base are also pretty deadly because now he has to fight against those hydras. The hydra speed there just still finishing though. Gets a surround, he's gonna go for a shuttle before a shuttle goes down. That is really going to delay the drop timing for Mong because now Mong has to first make a shuttle to carry that reaver over or crawl that reaver to the front door to the choke. Although he's going for the drones once again. Great move here from Mong, attacking the drones, and attacking at two different locations. So a lot of drones are going down once again, and Brain gets slowed down once more. Now down to 17 drones, he was almost on 22, but he lost about 4 or 5 of them in the back there. So this is really, really looking painful. But I've seen Brain make comebacks that seem impossible to, to, to do, but... His opponent in those games was never as good as Mong is right here. And Mong once again goes in through the front. That's a lot of Zealots there. Zealots with one attack attacking. He has to go through the Sunkens first though. The Zealots, the Zerkens are helping. But there's so many Zealots here. Hylas are arriving on the scene. The Hylas should be enough. But we do have a shuttle there with a Reaver on the side. Although we get spotted out by the Overlord there. But I'm not sure. Oh, Brain saw it. Brain saw it. He's going to try to intercept it. But is he going to be in time? No, he's not going to be in time. The Reaver arrives on the scene. Reaver starts on the loot. Zealous loads, Reaver shoots, Reaver... Oh, that's a, that's a really painful hit there on the drones. One more shot, doesn't fire yet though. Reaver and Shuttle both stay alive there though. He's gonna try to micro on the side there. Kills another Hydra. I think he killed about 9 or 10 drones there. Pretty, pretty painful hit for a player who has already lost so many drones time and time again. And keeps getting his economy completely messed with. 
So once again, frontal attack there with the Zealots, with the speed and level 1 attack. I'm gonna try to break through the front, and this Reaver is gonna pick up another Reaver buddy. And go for a frontal push, because he kind of knows that he probably won't be able to get through those Hydras. So he's just gonna change his target to the Choke. And push down the Choke with the Reavers and the Zealots. Oh no, he's gonna fly straight in. He's flying straight in. He's flying out. Great distraction there. Now the Zealots can deal damage on the Sunkers, but the Hydra's coming in as well. But the Reavers are unloading. He's gonna fire on the remaining Sunkers that are still morphing. They finish just in time. But the Zealots are tearing through. The Reavers are also tearing through. He pulls the Reavers away there with the Shield there. He's gonna fly around. The Hydras cannot intercept this. They're getting distracted by the Zealots. Reavers start unloading. This should be the GG here. Scarab starts to fly. Scarab explodes on only four drones. That's not as many as he wanted to, but he kills with one more and a hydra as well. But now we've got Zealots in the back killing stuff. And the frontal choke here is pretty much completely gone. Well, almost done. Only one Zealot there still attacking. Another Drucker comes in with the tops and Brain leaves the game because he knows that there's something in there that he cannot deal with. And indeed, he is right because there's Templars in that shuttle. And Brain gets demolished by Mong with a 1 next build order, and all because Brain miscalculated the start. He completely, completely missed the mark with his deductions at the start. He went for a very risky opening, probably assuming Mong was going for a Nexus first, but he never made it Nexus until like 8 minutes into the game. And by the time Brain realized that something else was up, it was already too late. He already had Zealots knocking on his front door, walking through his choke, killing drones in the back. That turned out ugly for Brain. So we see Brain lose for once, and we see Mong win and beat Brain. So yeah, Mong wins game number one. That means we're going over to game number two, which is a PvP between Doey and Rabbit. I'm gonna have to find the replay first though, so give me like 10 seconds and I'll do my best to find it as quick as I can and get it rolling. And we are back in the match, live from my studio, bringing you StarCraft Fastest Map Remastered, a PvP between Doey, your other name Whitney Houston, against the player on the other side of the map, Yang Shiki Sonyun, also known as Lovely Rabbit or simply Rabbit. Doey is one of the biggest Brood War streamers, he's known well, very popular and well known for his 3 versus 3 ability. He's really good at 3v3. But how good is he at 1v1? We've had him on the channel a couple of times before playing 1v1. And he did pretty well a couple of times, but also got really, really tossed around a couple of times as well. Ironically though, he's playing Protoss. So maybe the toss in Protoss is going to allow him to toss around the opponent. But given both players are Protoss, hard to call that definitively though. Both players are somewhat going for it looks like a plus one Nexus build order to boost up their economy for the early game and to explode all over the map onto their opponents right around the six minute mark when you really start noticing that extra income with that higher probe count. Usually around the six minute mark is when it all really comes together. Both players going for one gateway and going out to scout the map as well. But it's going to take a while before they find each other. So both players, ooh, the second gateway. We don't see a second gateway for Doey here though. Is he going to go for two extra gateways? Or three in total? Ooh, he's doing three gateways. So that's the first small difference between the two players. A rabbit goes for two gateways, Doey goes for three. Not quite sure how that is going to unfold itself as the game goes on. Because there's a gas coming out for, for Rabbit here. And honestly, the distance here, the distance between these two bases, is the difference maker. We've got a Forge and a Cybercore now also 
Well, a forge. No cybercore yet. On the way. Or rabbit. We've got a cybercore on the way. Or, or doughy. Doughy. So, yeah. They still haven't found each other yet. Now, if the two bases were closer to each other, the three gateways here might have been an advantage for Doughy, but the traveling time across the map really doesn't doesn't get him much of an advantage out of it. I'm gonna call that the earlier gas from Rabbit actually is going to be in the advantage of Rabbit, rather than the later gas timing here and the extra gateway is going to be an advantage for Doughy. That's purely because going for um, an advanced tech build order, I believe gets you more of an advantage if the spawn locations are far away. If the spawn locations are close, I believe that going for a mass army gets you a little bit more fighting power that you can almost immediately put into use. Now the rule for Protoss versus Protoss is that you can only build a single cannon in your choke and Rabbit did exactly that, a single cannon in the choke. We've got Zealots moving across the map, ready to attack, but Colonel Zealots here ready to defend, and two more Zealots here are ready to attack on Doey, who has no units in his base. They are still on the way, so he's gonna be the first player to start disrupting some minerals here. He has our killing some probes. Gets one, gets number two there as well. Gets number three, that's number four there also. This is going great for Rabbit. That's five probe kills, but now there's Zealots hunting for his own probes, but those Zealots are not going to get anything done whatsoever because these Zealots here from Rabbit are protecting his probes better than the Zealots that Doey didn't have protected his own. Now we've got a 4 to 6 probe difference. 6 probe difference. That's a massive, massive difference. Cannon is on the way there for Doey. Doey got caught off guard there. Didn't think those Zealots would arrive because he never saw them, never expected them. But the rabbit found a really, really great opening there to go in and deal some damage. Though the difference now is slowly shrinking down to 4. Maybe it's going to jump back from 4 to 6 as the probes spawn unevenly. Yeah, it's going to a very short time where rabbit has 6 more and now he's back on 4 more. He's got a uh, robo there on the way. Robo's finished. Shuttle's on the way. He's got a support bay also finished. And he's got an observatory also on the way. He's getting Dragoon range. He's got one attack and Dragoons as well. To start capitalizing on the probes he killed and build himself an advantage. But Doey is doing likewise. Though Doey is going. Well, Doey is also actually doing this almost the same thing. Getting Dragoon range. Getting Dragoons as well. Getting more gateways. Getting a robo facility. And of course, level one attack damage. Both players going the macro build order route, where they are going for more so units than for drops. Both players also going for observers. But there's a small, small difference here, and that is the fact that Rabbit is going for a reaver drop or a reaver with a shuttle to fight in the front before going for observers. Well, I believe that Doey is going for observers before going for a reaver. Now that Reaver that Rabbit is going might either give him an advantage in a 1v1 fight, or they have their units fighting it out, or it might give him the advantage through hitting a Scarab on the pros. So there's two options for Rabbit here they can go for to build himself an advantage. But at the moment, neither really has the advantage. Even though Doey's supply count is slightly lower, the fact that Rabbit has to go all the way across the map to put his advantage into use so that by the time he arrives, the supply count is even out. Observe it there for Dark Templars, but no Dark Templars have been spawned for Rabbit. Just have the shuttle drop there flying across the map. Won't get spotted out by the Observer because the Observer is going to hang in the middle of the base somewhere around here or in the front. Whereas Rabbit is also sending out his own observer to hang on the site or in the base here. There's always a couple of options. Given the fact that he's getting sight of the map, a vision of the map with islands on the side. Another observer there on the side. Oh, we didn't see the shuttle. Shuttle comes in. There's not much here in between the shuttle and his destination. Fight happening in the front there, but the fight is just a distraction. The probes are running away, trying to get, stay alive, trying to get to safety. Oh, he killed about 11. That's, that's a pretty, pretty nasty hit there. What did he kill? 
I'm not quite sure why it's showing that nothing got killed. He's most certainly killed about 11 or, well, now 12 or 13, but he most certainly got a lot of kills there with the, the Scarab. Because the probe count just shut down by 11. Even though it didn't show it on the kill counter for the Reaver, he definitely got a lot of them. So now we've got a pretty poor and injured Doe. Catching out those units from Ravnir on the middle of the map, which might just get him back into the match because that's a lot of units that will be going down for Ravnir on the middle. And while they're escaping, barely kills only one Zealot, one Dragoon, so he escaped with the skin out of his teeth. Barely, barely, barely got out, just in time. And now Doe is running into a trap because he gets a lot of units here in a circle, and well, half a circle. But they're gonna get a surround on these Zealots and Dragoons, and the Rabbit wants none of that. I mean, Rabbit wants everything for that. Rabbit is just like, oh yeah, sure, throw away your units, throw them away. And Doe is now realizing that maybe I shouldn't have gone in there. Maybe I should have just stayed back at home and defended myself. Because now I'm facing the counterattack. And the counterattack from Rabbit here is pretty big. Although he still has, ooh, the, sh the Zealot Speed just finished. Got armor on the way now as well. He's got level 1 attack finished. Well, actually, both players have level 1 attack finished. But it looks like Doe cannot really afford to get level 2. Or even to get one armor. But yeah, we've got like a 70 supply difference here. And the rabbit is just gonna try to steamroll uh, Doe here. And take home the win really quickly and really early. There's honestly not much Doe can do here. Losing all those probes really, really did a number on him. It completely put a stop to his production. There's some Zealots on the way, but they won't spawn anytime soon. There's two Reavers in the base of Doe as well. Rabbit is really, really, really putting all the puzzle pieces together here. Really taking everything he can, as much as he can, with that single Reaver drop. He got some probes. And this advantage here is massive. The probe difference has shrunk to about 13, but it's still, still really, really showing how much of a difference those 11 or 12 probes really, really can make. Yeah, the Reavers are just tearing through everything, and the Zealots that are spawning on the side there, though, are slowing Rabbit down a tiny little bit. Oh, what's this? He lost all of his probes. He lost all of his probes, but at the same time, he's also killing all the probes that Doe has, and Doe has effectively no mass, so now it's basically just Rabbit having 120 supply in units against Doe, who has like 20 supply in units. So even though Doe just hit a massive storm drop, Rabbit still takes home the win, because he's simply too far ahead of the curve, and Doe is forced to call the GG. After getting dissected, so to speak, he got outmassed, out macroed, and out dropped. And also, Rabbit seemed to have a better grasp on PvP than Doe did. Doe went through all the necessary motions at the start, but then just caught got caught off guard a couple of times. And Rabbit took the advantage. Really well played from both players. But it's a win for Rabbit. That is for sure. Rabbit wins the PvP. Which now means we're going over to Minchul against Zhang or Zhang. Still not sure how to pronounce it. Still not sure how to pronounce it. But I've been told by someone that the double Z is pronounced as a Zhang. Zhang. Not entirely sure. I do know that in Korean, if you put if you have like a word with two of the same letters next to each other, like um TT, then you pronounce it with an emphasis, like um, extra loud, basically. Extra loud. Or something like that, not entirely sure, not entirely sure. I don't want to be spouting fake news here. I don't really like fake news. But you know what isn't fake news? The fact that game number three here is starting. We've got blue against blue, I'm gonna change that up against to blue and red. We've got Gensei here on the red Protoss and Jungtube here on the blue Terran. I'm gonna speed up the first two minutes because that's pretty much always the exact same. Not really that interesting. Starts over the depot. Got a pylon coming out first for Gensei here. Starts scouting 
extremely, extremely early there with the probe. Also a second Nexus. And we got three barracks here for Junk Tube and a one refinery. A simulator there in the back. Not two, but only one. Most of the time players go for two. Gensei goes for a one, which means he is up to something that is different from the orthodox gold orders that we usually see. Both the pylon there in front of the refinery. That's the manor pylon. Blocks access to the refinery. It's really, really annoying. But luckily he's got a lot of marines, so that's gonna go down soon, but it does slow down the gas income by I think about 70 or 80, maybe even 100. Maybe even 100. Not entirely sure about how much he is slowed down here. But it might give Gensei a small advantage here. Goes for a second gas there anyway. Cybercore there also on the way. Rope count now at 20. SCB count at 18. Academy there is halfway done. Marines moving across the map. Not really much of significance happening. But Jung is soon going to arrive here in the front of Gensei's base. And Gensei is adding on a couple of cannons just to be safe and sound. He doesn't like to take risks. He likes to be safe and secure. Two more cannons. One Robo. And soon we might see a citadel as well, although there's... Oh, he's gonna build it here. That's cute, that's cute. Up there in the corner, so that when Zhang Tu scans the base here... Like, this is usually the first place they scan, or they scan this. They never scan this little portion, this corner here, where he placed the citadel. They never scan this portion, they always scan the front and the back. So, placing the citadel there in the corner means that Mitchell is probably going for Dark Templars. Otherwise, you wouldn't hide it there in the corner. Robo number two there, also getting placed down. Support bay should soon come out as well, although maybe he's gonna go for support bay number three. Is that probe there? All right, the probe is redirecting itself and it's gonna go for the Templars archive. Support bay, damn it, I was wrong. I was wrong. Templars archive? Templars Archive, yeah, there it is, there it is. Game okay, number two. Marines there retreating back to base. We've got a factory finished. We've got a starport on the way. We've got command center number two and a scan also being attached. We've got an engineering bay there on the side. And a turret there in the back and a turret there in the front. So he's setting himself up for the defense. As most Terrans, of course, always usually do. Shuttle speed there on the way, no zealous speed there on the way. We've got more Reavers on the way as well, and I do think he's gonna go for Dark Templars in addition, although at the moment he cannot afford it yet. Not sure what kind of an optimization he's doing here. Most of the times we see people go for zealous alongside the double Reaver, but Mitchell is doing something different. Oh, there's the scan, he sees the shuttle. Or like this. Yeah, there it is. We see the shuttle. He saw the shuttle as well. But what information he gets from it, I'm not too sure. We've got a double dock temper here on the way. Might go for two more, might not go for two more. We've got Storm Arcade also on the way. So that of course means that he is going to switch over into High Templars soon. They are now placed in the gateways. So Dark Templars and High Templars. Both queued up. Two more barracks? That, that's a lot of barracks. Most of the time we only see three barracks on a corner spot to defend because there's only three different angles shuttles can come from. Like the bottom side, the, the corner side, and let's just call it, you can come from the right side, you can come from the bottom side, and you can come from the in-between point, also known as the choke point that is in between the bottom and the right. That's three options, and you can place your marines like either on the bottom or on the right side, and they can intercept shuttles coming from every single direction. If you are, let's say, on a corner in a middle spot, oh wait, let's first look at this. The Dark Templar there on the side finds the perfect little hole there. It looks like Zangtube saw it. Scan's gonna take down both the Dark Templars there, and the Dark Templars wind up being a waste of money. 
What I wanted to say is if you are on a middle spot, for example on spot number uh, 12, you need 5 barracks just because there is 5 directions units can come from. Left, uh, bottom left, bottom right, bottom and the right. So you need more marines to cover all those directions shuttles can come from. Shuttle drop here on the top side though. Two reavers, two templars. <coughs> We've got one more zealot there on the side. Zealot there on the other side. Goes in. Tang Tube is not responding. SVs are pulling away though just in time. Although is he not in time? The shuttle storm comes down. Kills five. Scarabs there. Ooh, the shuttle goes down. Well, he killed some marines there as well. The Storms didn't get the massive money shot he was looking for. But at least he did something. At least he disrupted some of the economy and killed some Marines. Now he can go for the follow-up drop attempt. Also, he protects his command center, was Nexus, pretty well. Five cannons on the bottom side, four cannons on the top side. These probes are never ever gonna die. He's gonna try though, he's gonna try to unload some tanks there on the probes and kill some probes, hopefully. That's what he's gonna try to do. But I don't think he's gonna hit. I think those tanks are gonna go down before he can get a shot off. Total of 8 gateways there, number 9 there, drop comes in at the same time as well. Reaper there on the scene, he's gonna shoot, hit, scarab. Two Templars as well. Templars, Storm and Templars getting everything, there's nowhere to go. Only 22 SCPs left, 21! Well, now 22 again, but there's also an Archon morphing, but Archon's probably going to go down before it finishes. He's going to try to take it down as fast as he can. Archon, Archon, Archon is going to go down. It's gone. Yeah, that, that, that's a pretty bad situation here for... For, uh, for Junk 2. It's uh, pretty, pretty bad looking there. Not what he wanted to happen. We've got more upgrades on the way. Shield and armor for Mitchell and weapon as well. He already has level 1 weapon finished. Nope, 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 nope. I shouldn't speak before I have all the information that I need. I keep saying things that are not true. So much fake news. Got a form drop here on the side though. On the bottom side comes in. There's nothing in between. He's pulling his SVs away though. Just in time I think the storm's coming down. Storms the SVs on the minerals. Kills a couple. Oh, he kills a lot of them. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Why did Jung pull back his SVs? His SVs were just running to safety, and then he pulled them back to the minerals, and they got stormed to death. Not sure why he did that one. Not sure why he did that one, but that is really, really... Uh, frustrating, because that was a small... He killed his own SCVs, let's call it like that. He killed his own SCVs. Now, now he's got an uphill battle to play. 17 SCVs, almost no minerals, almost no marines either. Drop comes in, he's gonna try to intercept it, gonna try to snipe the shuttles, but the zealots are alone, and Templars are there as well. One more Templar there next to the SCVs there, the Templar doesn't storm because, ooh, it misses the storm, but it looks like all the Marines are dead. All the Marines are dead and gone. All the Marines are dead and gone. SCVs there are still alive though, SCVs are running back and forth trying to stay alive, the Templars are recovering their energies, repairing the bunker, the bunker is getting attacked by two zealots, which are really, really making this bunker fight for its life because there's only a single Marine in it. He ran, out of, he ran out of minerals. No, he loses the bunker. One more step. Oh, got a shuttle and loads. He stopped once again. Only 11 SCPs left. This is destruction. This is destruction. I'm not glorious, though. This is just like... He ran out of minerals for the repair. It's very anticlimactic, but the repair just soaks up. Oh, another drop there arriving on the scene. It's saying as well. So many Templars, so many Zealots, and Sun. What Junk to calls the GG on Discord and leaves and... Mitchell wins the game, quite convincingly at that one, quite convincingly, and also his macro was really really good here, he's got a massive base, a lot of stuff on the way, most of all, really good execution with his drops, so many units here in the base, Zhang just didn't stand a chance. So that's uh, game number 3, where Mitchell wins the game. And now we're going over to the final game. Brain against... Or just... Oh, that's been updated. Brain against Jungtu. Brain against Jungtu. I hope Jung has a little bit more luck in game number 4. Although he's playing against Brain. We saw Brain lose in the first game against Mong. And he's playing a Zerg versus Protoss again. 
Jiang is on the Protoss, Brain is on the Zerk. Can Jiang redeem himself, or will he once again find himself in a very, very difficult position? Well, that is the question. Can he redeem himself? Last game, he kind of screwed himself over with sloppy and poor SCV control. But it happens, even to the best players, it appears, because Brain, in game number one against Mong, also made some pretty, pretty massive errors in his judgment. He took risks that engineered his own downfall. Let's hope that Brain doesn't make any of such mistakes this time around. Hatchery in the front. Jung is going for a plus one Nexus first. So unlike what Mong did, Jung is going for the economy option instead of going for the aggressive option. He's going for a plus one Nexus is of course the economy option. And starting off with gateways is always the aggressive option. Both options are great, but if the gateway option, like the aggressive option that Mong went for, if that doesn't get results, if that doesn't slow down the Zerk, the Zerk is going to explode and be absolutely massive and impossible to deal with for the Protoss. Brainy are taking the exact same risks as he did in the first game, but this time around, there's no Zealous knocking on his front door, and he knows, and he knows, because he just saw the gateways finishing. He's gonna spot the Nexus there in the back as well. That means he's gonna take more liberties. He's gonna make only a single sunken, maybe only two, and then get a couple more hatcheries, get more drones, you know? He's gonna go for the economy option as well. Though he's losing a... Who the drone is... Oh, right, the drone goes down. That was so close. He... He didn't notice it. I'm not sure why he didn't notice, but the, the probe got a kill he shouldn't ever have gotten. Now getting chased around by a single Zergling. Zerglings are scouting the map here as well. Zealots have spawned. Zealots are defending. Zealots are killing stuff. And there's a cannon on the way there in the back. And he's got another... What? Well, I thought this was might have been something else, but it's a pylon. Once again, trying to call things prematurely. See 11 drones now, just gonna slowly drone up, slowly add more sunkens, and that zealot there is gonna die to the circlings. In the near future, once it gets caught, there it is, goes down. More zealots spawning, we've got a cyber core there on the way, he's gonna try to build something on the middle here. But I've got a feeling that Brain is gonna try to stop him from doing so. He's moving a little bit too close here, this is very, very close. Right under the Overlord gives away the fact that he wants to build on the middle moves further away. He moves very, 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 very far away. This is very, very, very far away. Pulls the probe all the way back to his base. Not sure what's up with that one. Maybe he tried to mind game brain into fortifying his choke a little bit too much. But in the end, he simply pulls back the probe and starts building back at home. 27 probes. Things are on track. Got one more hatch. Well, no. No. I wanted to say we've got one more hatchery for Brainier in the base, but he's going for a very, 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 very fast Hydalisk Den. Maybe he sees an opportunity to go for a Hydalisk Bust and break through the front. He also moved his over a little bit further into the middle and sees that there's no pylon there. Everything is happening inside of Jung's base. He's now scouting the base with the Overlord, getting information. He sees the more gateways are being added on. Although the Dragoons are now spawning, so this Overlord's days are over. Days are not numbered, they're simply over. Citadel of Doom finishing there. No, Citadel of Doom all finished. Getting a zealot speed. One more hatchery there being added on at the base. Got a lair there on the way as well. Two more Sunkas being built in the front for a total of six. Looks like Brain knows that Jung is going for a lot of gateway units, but he missed these robos. He didn't see these, and this might catch him off guard. It might catch him off guard. So Brain, despite going for a very fast Hydralisk then, did delay his first Hydras because he knows that the shuttles are going to be out a little bit late for Jung. He knows Jung is going for more gateways, so he's delaying them by as much as he feels safe even though he had that Hydras then out really, really early. He's got four Hydras on the way, not a lot of them. 
Zealous are, well, Dragoons are clearing out overlords on the sides, but Brain already has them up on the hill, so none of his overlords are going to die. He's got no vision at all on the top side here, but I do think Jung is going to try to go over the bottom side, which he is. He's going over the bottom side with only two Zealous. There's nothing in there. Ah, he's going to shuttle Zealous over the hill, but there's already four Hydras there expecting things to arrive. He's expecting this. He saw the Zealous moving to the bottom side, and the shuttle goes down. So yeah, basically he saw the Zealots walking to the bottom side there. And then he knew that, oh, alright, he's going to try to shuttle units over the hill. So I just got to move there and kill the shuttle. And he did. Very smart move there from Brain. He, this, this game, his calculations and his reads are better than the first one. The first one, everything just went completely wrong. Which can happen to even the best, it appears. It appears it can happen to even the best. Shuttle there. Tries to go in though, but the Overlords immediately allow for Brain to move his Hylos into position to intercept. Still tries to go in there. It's empty though. It's pretty much empty. It's only two Zealots inside the shuttle. It's basically empty. Two Reavers finishing up in the base. Six more gateways there on the way. Level 1 attack finished. The Dragoon range on the way. Storm on the way. He is preparing himself for drops and for frontal attacks. Whereas Brain is preparing himself for a massive economy because he's adding on even more hatcheries. He's already got four finished, minus the one in the front, which I'd never count. So four, another three for seven. This one is number eight, of course, but it doesn't count in my opinion. It does add to your production, but to me, this always counts as a structure in the front meant to keep units out. Scouts the Templars. Ooh, this is pretty nasty there. He sees all the information. He's got Mulus finished as well. Mulus are going across the map. What are they going to hunt for? Is there cannons in the back? There's cannons in the back, but it's only one and three more are on the way. There's a Goons there in the base as well. Templars as well is going to try to snipe the Templars. But the Goons here are going to maybe, 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 maybe deal some return damage there. That's one Templar. It gets the this, this second Storms, but he still avoids taking... Too much damage on his wheel. chill tries to kill a couple more units. He doesn't lose a single mule disc in an entire exchange. Well, that is really well played there from Brain. Drop there. Can't get in. Got defended by the Hydras and now defended by the mule The mule are once again going for more Templars. Turns them into an Archon just in time to avoid losing them. But this is pretty nasty and well-coordinated play here from Brain. Moves out with the Hylodus as well. There's so many units on the middle. There's so many units on the middle. But 160, 170 supply. Moves and attacks. Yildus decide against going in. Hydras are running back to base. Running towards the choke. To get sunken protection. The Reavers are unloading as well. Reavers are going to get attacked. Oh, the Reavers are killing all the Hydras so quick. The Mulas are still dancing back and forth looking for things to kill but cannot find anything to kill whatsoever. Looks like Jung is going to break through the choke here. Brain is making as many, as many, as many Hydras as he can, as fast as he can. Ooh, he's going to go for the shuttle. Shuttle there gets taken down. Dragoon's not strong enough to take down the Mulas before the shuttle goes down. But at least the choke has been broken. He's going to try to build a new one as fast as he can with those drones he just made. But the game is looking pretty, pretty nice here for Chang. Although now Brain comes in. The shuttle there on the side still is going to deal a lot of damage. Though he's going to try to snipe it with the Mudas. The Mudas are coming in. He's going to get on top. Ooh. Whoa, Zhang, you're playing so well. But it looks like Brain is just going to hold on. As the Sunkens here are very close to finishing. More Dragoons and Zealots are arriving there, though. I'm not quite sure which way this is going to go. Sometimes finished just in time, but these Hydras are going to go down, although more Hydras have spawned just in time. Jung is going to push through here. He's going to push through. Oh, Drop got intercept there. Oh, such a great reaction time from Brain there. Such a great reaction. Doesn't let anything slip through. He manages to hold on. The amount of Hydras is just big enough, and the Sunkens just, just came up just in time. It was a matter of seconds. But while all this was happening, Jungtube has managed to get 76 probes. And Brain is on only 40. So he's pretty broke. He's pretty broke and pretty far behind. But he has managed to hold on for now. 
a lot of shuttles here finished in the base for Zhang. He's got two Templars, two more Templars there, ready to be picked up. So this is going to be one drop, it's going to be flying in from the bottom side. He's got Scorches there though, ready to stop the drop. He's going to fly into an Overlord there, he's going to try to break through the front once again, but there's too many Hydras this time around. And the shuttle gets sniped. Temper unloads, Temper storms on some Hydras, the Hydras dodge the storm there though. Once again goes in to scout the base, Zhang really knows what he's doing. But it's not enough, he doesn't have an Observer there though. So maybe he doesn't know what he's doing. Maybe he doesn't know. Observatory is there finished though, but he has no observer finished yet. He's got two on the way. One other drop there loaded up. Ready to strike, ready to fly in, ready to go for the probes. The drones, I mean. We're still looking at seven hatcheries. Number eight, of course, is the main, but it doesn't count. Not to me. You're not a real hatchery, you're a lair. So does vision everywhere on the map, so this shuttle drop is just going to get spotted out time and time again. Peacefully flying, only to get sniped by Scorches. And there it is. What the chase? Da -da 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 -da. Oh, he starts unloading the temple. Oh, he tries to storm the Scorch, but he misses the storm. This is just a fun little dance that they're doing here. Trying to get his make his way in there. Oh, he gets taken down in the end. So he tries to go in through the front, but there's so many lurkers here that it's not really. Oh, he gets both the observers there as well. So now Zhang has to make more observers before he can try to break back in. But the lurkers in the front are really, really making it impossible for Zhang to break through the front through conventional methods. He's gonna have to try something else. He's gonna have to try something else for sure. Got about seven more lurkers on the way there for brain, so the frontal port portion is gonna be extremely unbreakable. The only thing Jan can do is maybe try to go in through the sides with something, but going in through the sides with drops hasn't worked yet. Maybe just landing somewhere in brain's base might do the trick. But so far, nothing has worked. Everything was very, very close though. Everything was very, very close. By the Overlords, he hasn't bothered clearing out vision on the sides, so that's also limiting him. Templars, he's just gonna use the Templars to storm on the workers instead of trying to go for the minerals. Shiloh goes down, observe there in the back still alive. Templars are storming everything they can, but not really gaining much ground. Dumplers going in by accident, the Koons are trying to fight and wriggle their way in. But the surrounding units, the surrounding circle here, is just doing such a great job in keeping those Koons away. Well, they're not even kept away, they're just gonna... Let's say they're doing a great job at killing them. Dumplers on the top to get taken down by Mutas. The upgrades for Zhang are pretty good though. So level 112, Rain is on level 1, well 02. Two attack, zero carapace. Goons not able to get through. The workers in between those sunkens and spores are just doing such a great job at preventing Jung from progressing anything whatsoever. He's not mining gas from his sixth uh, simulator. That might be why his gas is so low. He's also spending a lot of his gas though at the same time, but like having one assimilator that you're not mining from... Oh, he, he's mining from it right now. When I mention it, it always happens that whenever I mention something, it gets fixed. It gets produced. It gets built. Every single time. Every single time. So it looks like Chang isn't sure how to break in. We've got a... Great Aspire on the way in the front of the base, not in the back, in the front. We just threw it down wherever he wanted to throw it down. We've got the fight him out there on the way as well. Spore takes down the Observer. Oh, yeah. Observer's gonna get taken down. Observer's trying to run to safety, but there's so many Scorches and Mulas that nope, not gonna happen. I'm gonna try to get, at least take down some Spores and Sunless here in the front though, but the Lurkers are once again just gonna keep him away. Kills a shuttle there on the bottom side, I think. Not sure what it was. Shuttle comes from the top of it as well, but also takes that one down. 
so both the shuttles get taken down with ease. Brain is not even breaking a sweat. Still on seven hatcheries. Well, number nine is you on the way on the bottom side because this is number eight, number nine. But every single Overlord upgrade is also getting Overlord Vision upgrade. Not a lot of people get that one, but it's pretty useful. Level 1 Carapace is finished, level 2 attack is on the way. More Lurkers are spawning, we've got the Fire there as well. Consume is on the way, he's gonna try to bust out and break free and kill his opponent very soon. I'm not sure how though, he can try to break through the middle. Or he can try to go for an Overlord draw. Both are great options and both will of course work. Zhang is throwing away pros because he's pretty rich. He's throwing away a lot of pros though, he's throwing away like 24 of them. He's gonna try to break through the front once again with the Goons, Zealots and Templars. And of course, all observers there to assist. But this one spore in the front is making it so difficult. The vision of those... Oh, the spore's gonna take down the observers? No! It stays alive. But... This Observer doesn't really give him vision of all the Lurks in the back. The Lurks in the back are just killing stuff so quick. Everything just goes down so quick. This is just such a meat grinder where you send your units into just to die. This might explain why we so often see players go for mass drops inside the Zerg base. Or they go for mass reverse, which is really strong against this entire thing that Brain's got going here. But Zhang just decided against going for reverse completely. Not sure why though. We've got an Overlord there doing some scouting, checking the entire side of the map. Got Guardians moving in over the bottom side of the map. Guardians are going to take down some cannons, going to try to get the Nexus there. There's a couple of Dragoons there in the choke, a couple of Templars as well. But they're going to move out of the base. They're going to move away into the middle. But Jung is going to once again try to break through. And that is when Brain strikes. Brain strikes right at the right time. Although, no, there's... Alright, there's Corsairs as well. Gonna, ooh, a Storm comes out on the Guardians as well. The Guardians are going to take it out pretty quick. A lot of Storm comes out on the Guardians. Yeah, the Guardians not really posing much of a threat there. I thought they'd do more, but... All they got was three cannons. That's not that significant. So Zhang is finally clearing out units on the sides. Ooh, he's got Guardians in the forest. Shuttle drop comes in. Shuttle gets taken down. There's no Templars in there, though. Mass drop here with Ulch, with Hylisks, Defilers, Overlords coming in over the bottom side. Guardians also doing a great job there at fighting the Zealot and the Doom. There's too many Zealots here, though. The Zealots are leaving the base. No, go get back into the base. Get back into the base. Get them back home so quick as you can. Overlords are moving towards the Nexus. There's Templars still, Templars are storm, but Templars still have enough energy for too many storms. He's gonna unload everywhere, all over the place. And now Jung is forced through runaways bro. There's two lurkers everywhere. Zealots are arriving back home, but there's no observer back home, so you cannot detect to see them observer arrive, so just in time, but the probes have already been. Well the probes are actually still alive, but it still disrupts. Done completely. He lost a lot of units here in the middle as well to the Guardians. And now the Guardians are breaking through as well. And now I think Brain is just gonna send units over from his base into Junk's base. Lurker, there it goes. Lurker's still alive. Come on, Lurker, go down. Guardians in the front. Hydra's in the front. Guardians on the side. Guardians everywhere. Guardians in the base. Lurker's in the base. Everything is being sent into the fray. Ready to kill. Ready to fight. Ready to put the finishing blow onto Junk. Who simply couldn't formulate an answer to all of the defensive movements Brain made. Although Brain was very close to dying once, once, just once, but he held on and Zhang just couldn't keep up. 2-3 updates on the Hydras, 2-2-3 updates on the Dooms of the Guardians at level 2-1, two, 2 Carapace, 1 attack. Brain is very good with his upgrades here. Oh, another overall drop coming in at the same time. He's just throwing attacks everywhere non-stop, making Zhang focus on too many things at once. The Probes are once again pulled to safety, but he's gonna lose the Nexus. And the Nexus, oh no, two lurks are in the back, gonna take down the Probes. The Probes go down, yes they do. He's gonna go 22, 20 left or something. He's gonna lose his Nexus as well, and Zhang calls the key on the Discord, and Brain wins the game. 
with an insane mental gaming performance here. Like Jung just kept doing the same things over and over, but they were never working. And Brain always had an answer. He had a very diverse tech use, very diverse use of strategy and all that kind of stuff. He played it really, really well and had a really great setup here in the front with the lurkers in between the spores and the sunkens, keeping those dragoons away, sniping observers to always stop the frontal push, make it so the lurkers cannot get attacked, maximizing lurker efficiency. And of course, the very good consecutive drops here mixed in with guardians attacking from the front while the drops were attacking from the side in the back. Just too much to handle for Jung, and Jung succumbs to the superior battle power of Brain. And Brain proves that even though he had a bad first game, he does have what it takes. I mean, he's already shown it many times again. But he really once again shows that he is indeed an absolute beast of a player. You will find an answer to almost everything that you do. So yeah, Mong wins game one, a PvZ. Rabbit wins game number two, a PvP. And now we've got Zhang losing to Minchul in a PvT, and Brain winning the final match in a Zerg versus Protoss showdown. I'm still not sure who Zhang is. I have no idea. But we are all familiar with Mong, Brain, Rabbit, and Doey, and of course Mitchell. So I hope you like the variety of today, of a lot of different names, different games as well. And I hope to see you back to return to the channel when I make my next video. If you like the video or have something to say, leave a comment. And yeah, have a great day. Hope you enjoy yourself, and I hope you are entertained. See you next time. Sayonara.